What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot here and we are back with my weekly recap, breakdown, and review of the latest episode of HBO's The White Lotus. We're talking episode 4 which was titled Recentering and after this episode, for me personally, this show has slowly but surely made its way into one of my favorite new shows of 2021, especially after this episode and we have so much to break down in this spoiler discussion. I'm so excited to be here but before we dive into it, make sure you all are checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well welcome to the community consider subscribing to the channel and while you all are at it make sure you hit that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when i drop new content if you all enjoyed this spoiler discussion of episode four of the white lotus well make sure to like the video share the video it helps out the channel a lot but i also appreciate all the support and in those comments once you've seen this latest episode of the white lotus Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the new stuff we got with the Mossbacher family. Shane, Rachel, and Shane's mom coming to the equation. We get another character in Tanya and her meeting Greg and how this might derail her plans with Belinda. And we learn more about the relationship between Olivia, Paula, and now Kai. And we have this little love triangle going on. Let's discuss it all in the comments below. So my initial thoughts coming off this fourth episode. I know a lot of you all mentioned that episode three was your favorite, but for me... This was the best episode of the show so far. The writing was so clever. The jokes and the comedic beats in this episode had me dying laughing, especially with Armand and Dylan and Armand and Mark. It was just such a funny episode. But just more in context of the writing of the show, the character development, the more backstory we're getting, the the rift of the relationships that we're seeing, it, it's just such a well-written show. And it's just really keeping me engaged. And I just think this is one of the best shows of the year as far as new shows uh, uh, that come out this year. I'm really enjoying the show and I thought this episode was fantastic. But again, let me know if episode four was your favorite, your least favorite, someone in the middle. Let's discuss it in the comments. But let's get into this recap because we got a lot of stuff to go over as the episode opens up with Paula and Kai. And it was nice to, in this moment, learn more about the Kai character because we've seen him in the past few episodes. But we really don't know who he is, but we learn in this moment that he grew up on a land. But unfortunately, the land evicted him and his family to build this resort and him and his family have a bit of a rift because they feel like he's betraying his family because he's working for the same people that kicked him out of their home so it was nice to get that context but also it was nice to get a answer question that a question answer that we've been wondering for the last few weeks what's the deal with Olivia is she obsessed with Paula does she love Paula but no we learn this moment as Kai say when can't you just tell her about our relationship is she your friend and Paula says yes she is my friend but she's tricky. If I have something that she wants, she's going to take it from me, which puts more in perspective about the decision and the move that Olivia makes towards Kai a little bit later. But it's finally nice to understand what the relation, what the dynamic of those two characters are. And, and she says she's her friend, but I don't know what kind of friend does what Olivia does in the past, as well as what we see in the end of this episode, as we see Paula making her way back into the room. But let's catch up with Armand, who is waking up to being late for work. He's taking a shower in the women's restroom. Belinda catches up with him, and this is where he vents to her and, and admits that he has kind of relapsed on his uh, sobriety, and that he vows to not go down this path because once he is high and drunk he's hard to handle and man we see Armand do some pretty crazy things in this episode but one of the fun best moments of this show to me is seeing our, our families and seeing the characters waking up in the morning and also when they're at dinner so we see my my the most interesting family on this show with the Mossbachers waking up as Nicole is, is kind of coming at her husband Mark in regards to his day drink another day but I thought it was some interesting dialogue that she says to Mark as Mark is talking about that he was depressed obviously finding about his dad and that his dad chose his sex life over his family and Nicole says something interesting he says that sounds familiar and we learn a little bit what she meant by that a little bit later in the episode but I thought it was maybe some foreshadowing that maybe it's something that Mark's going to do sexually that might end, keep that might put him in that box whether it's with his wife whether it's with someone on the island maybe Armand I don't know but speaking of foreshadowing there's another moment that Nicole mentioned as she wakes up the girls to go to breakfast and she realizes that Quinn is on the beach again very important that she says him being on the beach is very dangerous because he can get swept in the water. Are we looking at Mark in that box? Are we looking at Quinn in that box? Or are we looking at another character that's a part of the Mossbacher family vacation and Paula? Because shout out to a big a big supporter of the channel. We have my friend Steel51 Rain, as you guys can see on the screen now. He mentioned something about the poster, and as you all can see, 
there is a lightning above the head of Paula. Is that foreshadowing for her being the one in the box? I had said last week that maybe Olivia is going to kill her because she's jealous of the relationship she has with Kai, but maybe something happens accidental. Maybe she's out on the beach and lightning strikes her. Let me know again. Are we looking at Mr. Mossbacher? Are we looking at Quinn? Are we looking at Paula in the box or someone else entirely? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But speaking of Quinn, as he's electronicless, he's on the beach, he's waking up, and help me figure this out in regards to interpretation. We see Quinn, he's on the beach, and he sees the islanders coming off of the beach, coming from the water. And the way he's looking at them, I'm, it's two, I'm in two sets of mind. He almost looked like he was attracted to those men with their shirts off, eating burrito breakfasts or whatever they were doing. Or, and again, he, he might be interested in those guys. Or did you guys take that scene, and later on we'll talk about him introducing himself to the islanders, but did you take that scene as like him seeing a, a bond ship amongst this group of men that he might not have that bond with his own father, Mark. Again, do you guys take that as him being attracted to those men that were shirtless and coming out of the water? Or did you take it as like he is doesn't have his electronics, he is a younger generation, and he doesn't know how to interact with people because he's so you know plugged into the world. So let me know what you all, how you interpret that scene. Let me know in the comments. But let's go back to the newlyweds. We're talking about Shane and Rachel as Rachel is having this conversation with her husband. This is one of many conversations that he isn't emotionally available for his wife as she's talking about her lack of confidence in her field of work, that she doesn't feel like she's great at her work. And Rachel comes up with the idea that she wants to do a non-for-profit for her career. And Shane just immediately, that's a great idea because he doesn't want her working, doing some non-profit type of things. is something that sounds very familiar to him as we learn about his mom a little bit later. But that, that conversation is interrupted by Tanya who is apologizing for her actions the other day. And she felt like she felt her mother and, and feeding her mother to the fishes, which again, the Tanya stuff we'll talk about a little bit later. I'm still not intrigued with her story, but she delivers some of the more funnier moments of the show, no doubt. But going back to the backstory of our characters with Olivia and Paula as they're having a conversation about this gentleman by the name of Trevor, which based on this conversation, I'm assuming that Trevor was someone that Paula was maybe into or maybe dating, and Olivia made her way in as the friend and took Trevor from Paula as she says, you know, that was just a bad choice that I made, and trust me, we're friends. You can, If you like a boy, you can tell me. I'm your friend friend she says right but nonetheless we see tanya tells the girls that she actually gave her uh, her bag to which i thought was a funny comment again tanya's very funny she says she gave the bag to the boy with the khaki face i've never heard anyone refer to someone having a khaki face but i thought that was funny but cut between seeing armand who is being confronted by olivia and paula about the bag and we see armand like oh it's a green bag yeah i know what you're talking about and it was just so funny as armand's going to his office and shane's like hey hey and he swerves him again the beef between those two characters is fantastic but we see shane and this is important as his wife is confined to him, he breaks the conversation and goes to attend to her mind, which is one of many examples in this episode, just showing you this rift between those two couples that she is realizing that this man isn't emotionally available to her. Because again, it's not about sex with her, it's about the emotional connection. He isn't there emotionally for her in this time of kind of a midlife crisis for her. Do I go in my career? Do I be this housewife? She's going through a lot, but he's not there. But speaking of Shane, as he has a Karen moment, or as the internet uh, uh, coins it, a white male version of a Karen is goes by the name of Kevin. As we see, Shane wants to speak to Armand's boss and you could just see the steam coming off Armand's face as he's just trying to keep it all in, which ultimately we see him say, oh, yeah, I'll give you my boss's card as he goes back to the office. He's about to give the drugs in the bag back to the girls, but he ultimately gives in the bag but keeps the drugs from himself, which was not a good decision. But let's go back to the Moss Barker family as Quinn vows to, you're not going to like this after he doesn't, they don't give him a phone to interact with. But that leaves the family, they, they all go their separate ways, but it leaves Mark at the table by himself with the mind who yet again just took a shot of drugs took some shot of k and again when he's on drugs he goes to another side he's a little bit more connected to his horny side as he is flirting with mark he even winks at him which again the awkwardness in the show is just so fantastic the way that the actor delivered it is so great seeing her flirt with him was fantastic but let's go back to it yet again 
I mentioned every single week, Belinda, Tanya, I like those actresses that are in the role, but I'm just not that interested in this storyline. And I get the storyline, Belinda and trusting uh, uh, in, in her business with Tanya. I get all that stuff, but I'm just not as interested in their plot. Whenever we go to them, I'm just like, uh, can we go to someone else? But nonetheless, we catch up with them as Belinda's kind of kissing up to Tanya and really trying to shoot her shot about her business as she talked to her son last week. And they're having a conversation about the wellness program and her opening up her own business. And she takes her shot. She says, you know what? Yes, I would like to go to business with you, but that's interrupted because Tanya has to go and do her uh, her retreat or do her a whole treatment thing. But she says, let's get into business together. So Things are starting to look up and up for Belinda, but it's unfortunately maybe kind of derailed by another character that we'll talk about here in a second. But we start, as I mentioned earlier, we learn more about these characters in this episode and more about their privilege thought process and how they view themselves in today's society as we learn from Nicole as she's having this conversation with Olivia and her daughter about white males and how they can't get hired and the old poor is white males in today's society that they're the underdogs right i'm just laughing when she's talking about this and we see paula having a conversation and she just reminds her you know white men are doing pretty fine in today's society but i'm just i love how the show throws in the the zeitgeist of the political landscape in today's society it's not over you know they don't beat you over the head with a political tone but i just love how the show throws in those conversations and this was one of many in this episode which again speaks to one of my favorite episodes of the show but speaking of favorite moments surprise surprise armand brings shane his surprise gift and is no other than his mother played by molly shannon who is such a great comedian and such a great actress and it was so great to finally see her in the show and you know who was happy to see her Shane's new wife, Rachel, I'm kidding, she hated that she was there. You could just see the look on her face as her Shane's mom comes in and immediately goes to the room situation, which is obviously a touchy conversation. And then she gives her a backhanded compliment about her complexion. Molly's such a great actress, such a great comedian. And just the way that that scene played out was just so awkward. And just let me know in the comments now, how would you all react to your mother-in-law, father-in-law, or you know your significant other's parents coming on your honeymoon? Would you be accepting of it, or would you be as pissed as Rachel is? Let me know in the comments. But we get again. We talked about backstory. We learn more about Mark as he tells Quinn that he cheated on his mom. I don't know how long ago it was, but he mentioned that he bought her seventy-five thousand dollars worth of bracelets and that he went to therapy and all this different stuff. So we learn a little bit more about that family dynamic. It may be this trip wasn't just for you know mark to get his mind off of what he thought was cancer but also maybe to amend their relationship because again i don't know how long ago it was that he cheated on his wife but it kind of again this might have been a a multi-purpose vacation for this family but again i mentioned tiny story not being the most interesting but she is so funny as she meets this new character by the name of Craig, played by John Grease, who's a great actor. You might have seen him in Napoleon Dynamite, but I know John from his role in Martin as Sean, but nonetheless, this is so funny. When he mentioned what he's doing there, and he was drunk and it was at the wrong room, but he's there with his group of BLM members, and the fact that she thought that that was Black Lives Matters was just so damn funny to me. But nonetheless, the importance of this is, as she gets asked to go on this date, this now is taking off her conversation she had with Belinda earlier in regards to her pitch about opening this business. Now her focus is on this man. So now the interesting, this, this plot is thickening. It's now getting a little bit more interesting because now it's like, what's going to happen when she doesn't want to open this business with Belinda? And now the ball gets the rolling between their story being a little bit more intriguing for me personally. But let's go on about the production of the show. I don't know if I mention it every single week, but I'm such a fan of the score of this show. I actually downloaded it on Apple the other day and listened to it. It's a fantastic score, but I love how they use the score in the show as we're seeing Armand taking the drugs, and he talks to Olivia. He hears that Olivia and Paula want to talk to him about some things that are missing from their back. But, you know, we have, as Olivia says, that she's missing her medications, but we can just see that he takes the drugs to get a little bit off the edge of him. But I love the piano being used. It creates the tension in the sense of uncomfortability within this scene. I love the score in this show. But again, Armand is the king of swerving as he's like, oh, well, why don't you just write down what you're missing from your bag? And of course, they're not going to say they're missing K and they're missing drugs and all this stuff. It's just like, fine, whatever. We'll just leave it alone. But I love, again, the score in the show is so fantastic. But let's go back. We 
talked about Quinn earlier as he is continuing to learn to look at the world in a new light without a phone in his hand. And he uh, actually goes and introduces himself to those group of men. So again, I don't think it's necessarily him. He might be attracted to him, but I think it's just showing this younger generation what happens when you put the phone down and actually have a person-to-person -person conversation with them as we see him kind of like looking at the water, looking at the whales. You know, he's now seeing that there's a world out there that's not just on your screen. So I really like what they're doing with that Quinn character. As, like I said, he's introducing himself to this group of people. And again, is it him just being new to the world and not new to the world, but like being open to meeting new people, interacting with people, or he he misses this lack of bondship in his life. Let me know what you all think about it. But I mentioned the mornings are great, but also the nights are great in the show. Dinner time for all of our characters as Armand is drinking at work and he really is challenging his horny side because as his employees, Dylan and the other kid with the khaki face, there's a glass that breaks. He's looking at their asses and again, he walks up to the Moss Market family and is blatantly flirting with Mark in front of everyone and Quinn notices it and Olivia notices it and it's such a funny moment as Quinn asks his mom is that the $75,000 braces that you have on your wrist there mom as obviously she doesn't want the kids to know that they were almost going to divorce each other which was just so funny but cut between that we see Craig and Tanya don't have that much in common they're really not having that much to talk about at dinner we see the the moment between Shane Rachel and his mom at dinner cut between that of Olivia informing her mom that that white males are going to be fine mama i checked the, the result all the white males are doing just good and they're thriving as they always are right but it's in this moment again the show doesn't beat you over the head with a political conversation or social commentary but it's a as i was told growing up when you're at dinner you never talk politics, you never talk about finances or religion, but they're having this conversation about the anarchy and how people that are uh, in a disposition are, they don't really want the whole system to be broken, they just want it because they're thriving off of it. It was just an interesting conversation how, how they were to have and how Mark brings in his two cents of how he used to work in a corporate world and he was always fighting the good fight and now he can't you know do that because it's now a trend. So I just love how the show throws in the social commentary and it's handled so well and it's just so funny to see these privileged people People, how they perceive today's society and how they think that they're the underdog. It's just such a funny conversation, the, the white the white privilege uh, conversation versus just, you know, how we see Paula's disposition in this moment because we see the conversation get shifted to her and she poses the question to Mark, what do you stand for? So again, I just love how this show tackles the social commentary that's going on in today's society is so well handled. But again, a yet a great example of the music cue and the tensions and the uncomfortability level as we see Shane tells his mom about Rachel's decision. And this was just such a moment for Rachel as she doesn't really want to talk to Shane's mom about this. And she mentions something that doesn't sit well with her as she says she wants to work and Shane's mom immediately shuts it down as well as Shane as she talks about it's all about the money the money the money that she should do a charity event but the thing about that she loves about charity you can do just as much or just as little as you want to but it's all about the money which again puts in perspective of what Rachel's thought process can be that she might have married the wrong man she's not in love with this man who even jokes and again the, the conversation the last few weeks we've been talking about it Shane, up until this episode, he really hasn't been like the asshole that the show makes him out to be. He hasn't done anything terrible. He has every right to be upset about the room uh, misunderstanding, but it was in this episode that he was really an asshole because he even says to his wife that his her joke, her life, her career is a joke and calls it a sucker's game and, again, bringing up her situation with his mom who she doesn't want to talk about and to make matters even worse, like I said, his mom bringing up the whole, it's all about the money, what can you bring to the table? So, again, this is one of many different examples of this episode that Rachel was reconsidering her relationship with her husband and then we transition to that to seeing again Tanya finally learning what the BLM stands for and which again so funny when that moment happened and we have more of the conversation with the Mossbacher family with Quinn saying that everyone's a parasite just living off each other and where does the pain go which leaves Paula to leaving the dinner and just kind of wrapping up this dinner and wrapping up the episode and just cutting between these different shots here which was just a great way to end the show even though they don't have much in common we see that Tanya invites Greg into the room for a nightcap. We see that, which was just so funny. Armand makes his move on Dylan and the way he's talking to Dylan, like, what do I got to do to get you naked? I'm obsessed with you. I'll give you a day off. Let's have some fun. Armand is my favorite character in the show and I love that actor. He's just, he plays the role so perfectly, but we see Dylan accepts this party invitation. Olivia makes her move towards Kai and just playing all cutesy, like, oh, are you from the beach? 
she's a friend, right? And she's doing some really friendly things with Paula's new boyfriend, are we going to call it? But nonetheless, we end the episode with Shane and Rachel, another example of Shane not listening to Rachel and even takes another dig at her as he's on the phone or trying to reach out to Armand's boss, which is a fake number. He tells Rachel, she's like, how would you feel if my mom was here? Well, I, I wouldn't care, but more importantly, your mom wouldn't be here because you can't afford a plane ticket, which is just like, God damn, this dude is being such an asshole this episode. And I think this is yet again an example. As he runs out of the room, she's like, Shane, we're having a fight. And he tells her, we have our whole lives to fight, which again, just puts in perspective, this is not the man that I thought that I was going to marry, which I think by the end of the season, we will not see them together. Or they might not get a divorce, but I think they might have a break. Let's just say that. Uh, but back to Ramon and Dylan having some fun, the close-ups on their faces as we see Shane making his way to the office. And at this point, the clothes are off. Olivia and Paula, Olivia tells her that you know she's a true friend and this, that, and the other. We know that's not the case. It'll be really interesting to see what happens with their friendship. But back to the funniest moment of the episode. As Shane is talking to Belinda and follows her to the office, they open the door and my man Armand is eating <laughs> Dylan's ass out. And he is obviously, Shane sees that and he just can't help but laugh and say to himself, oh, you are over. I'm going to end this dude. End of an, uh, of an episode, incredibly hilarious, well-written, uncomfortable episode, so much tension, so much backstory, easily my best, my favorite episode of the show so far. And what does this mean for Ramon? What can we expect now between Paula, Olivia, and Kai? What about this whole situation with Belinda and Tanya and now Greg in the mix? Is Tanya going to be so focused on this man that she's not going to want to help her anymore? Only time will tell. And of course, we got to talk about Shane's mom being on the resort. What does this mean for the relationship? And again, who's in that box? Are we talking Quinn? Are we talking Mark? Are we talking uh, Paula? Are we talking another character? What a fantastic episode, and I can't wait to see what episode five has up this sleeve. But more importantly, I want to know what you all thought of this episode, your highs, your lows, your pros, your cons, your favorite moment, your least favorite moment. And again, who's in the box? Let's discuss it all in the comments. If you stuck around in this review, I appreciate every single one of you all. If you haven't already, just a friendly reminder, make sure to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell. That way you don't miss any of my weekly reviews for this show and many other reviews coming for movies and shows for this new month of August. Hope you all are having a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed this review. We'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.